Hey Moo! Hi YouTube! You know, isn't it great that skeptics and science geeks can actually admit when we've got something wrong and take corrections? I love it. For those of you who missed it, this video that I'm responding to, uh, it's a video by Mooly Poo. Uh, I've always loved her videos. She's great. You should go and subscribe to her channel right now. Um, she either got something wrong or didn't state it quite right, and I'll explain what it was, and I'll uh, reproduce the experiment that she just did. Uh, here I have a bowl. In the bowl is just some colored water, water with some red food coloring, and inside is the mystic floating candle of science! I have no idea what that means. Uh, which I will now light. Kids, get your parents' permission. And if you try this experiment yourself, do not try it with alcohol. It's flammable. Duh. Okay. Now, what I have is I have a glass, and I'm going to turn the glass up in the bowl. It's a transparent bowl, so you should be able to see. Look closely. I'll zoom in on it. When I put the glass over it, any minute now, the candle should extinguish, having been robbed of its oxygen. Come on, work. And there it goes, and, oh, look at that. Okay, it's not working as well as it did for Moo, but you can see it a little bit. See what's happening? The uh, red water line inside the glass is at a greater height than it is in the bowl. It got sucked up into the glass. And that's the experiment, and it's really cool, and it's all about pressure, yada, yada, yada. Now, if you're like me, and I know I am, you did this experiment in school and you were told that it's because the candle consumed all the oxygen. And since air is 20% oxygen, this left 20% less air, and then it rushed in to fill the vacuum. Um, Moose said something that sounded like it might have been the same thing, so I uh, corrected her on that and she clarified it. It's not true. Uh, those of you who've done this in school, yeah, your teacher told you something wrong. I hate to break this to you, but this probably isn't the only one, okay? So, what is, what is happening? What is going on? Well, you can easily see... I'll light the candle again. You can easily see that it's wrong by the fact that, really, the water doesn't start to get sucked up into the glass until after the candle goes out. Now, why would that be? Shouldn't it be while the candle is consuming all of the oxygen inside there? The oxygen level's going down and the water level rises? No, it's only after it goes out. Well, here's what's happening. <clears throat> so this candle, of course, is burning. And that produces heat, which you can feel. Don't get too close to it, but you can feel the heat. And primarily, this heat is rising. Of course, when air, like most other things, is heated, it expands, it becomes less dense. When I put the glass over top of it, I'm going to try to get in the middle here. When I put the glass over top of it, I'm trapping in... There we go. Okay, I'm trapping in all that oxygen. It consumes the oxygen, and then, look at that, see, I think it worked better that time. Then it goes up, right, after the candle has gone out. So what happens is when I set the glass over top of it, I trapped in warmer air. After the candle went out, the air cooled. And when the air cooled, it contracted, and that is what sucked the water into it. Actually, of course, what's happening is it's the air pressure here pushing down, pushing it up inside there. Um, now, I got slightly different results than Moo did, and I'm not sure why, uh, but with her, if you look closely on her video, she did get a little of it coming up into the glass. Um, and that was before the candle went out, and then after the candle went out, it accelerated up. The reason why is because the candle's getting dimmer and dimmer and dimmer as it has less and less oxygen to consume. Uh, but after the candle goes out is when it really starts getting... You can see there's a definite difference there and that really didn't show up until after the candle went out. So, 
you know, science is great, but a lot of the things you hear in science lessons might be wrong. It always pays to think about it. And if you think about it, you say, well, why would the liquid rise up in there after the candle goes out? If it's because of consuming the oxygen, it's because it's not. It's because of the gases in there cooling. If you think about it, you can also know that the oxygen's not going to go away. It isn't just poofed out of existence. It isn't teleported to Loompa Land or anywhere. What happens is the oxygen is being burned by the candle and it's being converted. Uh, there's some carbon in the candle and it turns it into carbon dioxide and there's some other gases that are made. So, you know, if you have the oxygen gas that's inside there replaced by carbon dioxide and other gases, it doesn't really make any sense. You've got the same amount of mass in there as you had before. The density is going down and the reason why is because it's cooling. And as it cools, it contracts, the pressure goes down, and that's when the magic vacuum of science happens. So, always pays to be skeptical, always pays to think about anything, no matter what the source. Just because Moose says it, or just because I says it, or just because, you know, someone on YouTube, you know, or someone wearing a lab coat says it, doesn't mean it's true. Think about it, evaluate it for yourself, try it yourself, and see the results you get.